what is up ladies and gentlemen welcome to this new video and i hope you are ex as excited as i am uh, we are now about 10 seconds away from the announcement of the upcoming league uh, path of exile 3.12 and if you look back we've had the harvest league we had the blight league and uh, before that we had a metamorph and there's been mixed feelings about you know every league and the previous league which was harvest was you know mainly for the people that like to craft and me included i loved it i enjoyed it very much but there was a lot of people that didn't enjoy it so the pressure is high on ggg for this upcoming league and we're gonna take a look right now so let me refresh this and see what we got oh <coughs> all right Path of Exile heist? Really? Alright, okay, cool. Let's, um... Let's take a look. Alright, so we got a trailer we're gonna watch first, and then we got some more information down here, so, but let's start with the trailer. Thank you, everyone, for being on time. We have a lot to cover. The mark is in the rear of the dining hall. Cast, you're up first. You'll need to crack the lock and get us inside. Okay. Once you're in, Talina will use the vents to bypass patrols. There's a oh. steel barrier that blocks access to the hall. Oh, says 11! Let's go! Tibbs, can you handle it? Great. Then Isla just needs to bridge the gap. All right. Man, okay, okay, okay. There's enough in that bunker for all of us to live very comfortably. If we stick to the plan... Oh, what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I mean, is this like Ocean's Eleven slash Mission Impossible League? I don't know. It's, it's okay. Right, okay. I, I hope this is good, but oh my god. Plan. I'm so confused. We should have no trouble at all. If we stick to the plan, we're gonna be robbers. What are we robbing? Oh. Wow. Um. That was interesting. That was like I've had, I've read and I've seen and I've thought up about different, you know, scenarios for the upcoming league, but this is nothing like it. So basically, we're gonna be like bank robbers getting through like lasers and 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 all that stuff to break into a vault and get stuff, and we're gonna have friends helping us. Okay. Wow, um, I'm really excited to see what the uh, idea behind this is. Um, yeah, let's just listen to the dev commentary straight away. I really want to hear this. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? In this new league, you will plan and execute elaborate heists. <laughs> oh, there's the catch with the Monaco! Oh! <laughs> uh, oh my god. All right, so if you haven't seen uh, Twitter, um, the cat with with the mono, monocle has been frequent out there, and um, I think it was on Beck's uh, Twitter. And then we actually got a picture with this cat sitting on that chair uh, with like with like this background. All right, okay, so okay, so that makes sense now. Or yeah, it doesn't. Okay, okay, let's go. Cat with monocle. Holy crap! Travel to the Rogue Harbor and hire a crew of thieves to perform tasks such as lockpicking, demolition, and transportation. Break into a secure facility and be careful not to trigger the alarm. What? Be careful not to trigger the alarm. This is Path of Exile. Who's careful playing this game? Okay, this this went from Ocean's Eleven to um, Mission Impossible to like um, uh, shit. What is it called? Anyway, never mind. Let's go. Bypass security measures and infiltrate the vault containing a uh -huh. valuable artifact. 
Make a mad dash back to the extraction point to lock in your haul. Okay. Use your cut of the profits to obtain a blueprint, uncover escape routes, and train your crew as... Alright, hold on. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look. Right, so we'll have a map over, over the heist. Right. And okay, so, so, so we hire our crew based on the abilities that we need. And then we pay them a fee. We need to sh we need to split. Can we just not just like go all uh, like Dark Knight Joker and just kill them afterwards? Um, okay. All right, that's cool. Good job executing a grand heist. Hold on. Right, so we can add heist items to. All right, okay, so we can upgrade our 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 friends, our comrades in this. You know, in this heist. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Grand heist. Metal Gear Solid. When I said that it went from Ocean's Eleven uh, to Mission Impossible, and then Metal Gear Solid. Like, don't get don't get caught. Right. Your payoff from exclusive new items such as alternate quality gems, trinkets. Wait, wait, wait. I'm am sorry that I'm backing up. I just want to see. Oh, all right. Okay. So uh, basically, this icon is just. Telling us that this is heist loot, heist items. Body and weapon enchantments, replica unique items, experimented base. Whoa! All right, let's see here. Okay, enchants. Oh, also gets linked. Life modifiers have increased effect. That is cool. That is really cool. What else? Uh, this is a replica of the Iron Commander. All right. Um, okay. What? The unique items, experimented base types, and more. Base types and more. Wait, what? What do you do to it? More. Enchantments, replica unique items, experimented base types, and more. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Plan your escape on September 18th. September 18th. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys. Um. I mean, as I said, we had a couple of leaks that have been decent, that have been good. We had a couple of leaks that some have really enjoyed and some haven't. And um, I don't know, this, this feels like, um, you know, going back to um, like the temple. I mean, I, I don't know, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. So let's go through the rest of the information we have here on the page and um, see if there's anything interesting. All right, so you will hire skilled thieves to help you pull up risky heist, steal valuable artifacts to fund and train your crew as you plan towards the execution of a grand heist. All right, so you basically do this regular heist and then you do a grand heist like the... Uh, okay, 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 I get it, I get it. Like Betrayal, you have the mastermind in the end, maybe. All right, so the Rogue Harbor is okay so that is the new area for our crew of our crew our oceans 11. oh we have odin ish all right that looks cool okay all right so specialists in order to execute a heist you need to know the location of the valuable artifact and what the def defense is safeguarded okay so we need to have specific objects in order to hire our experts. So what do we have here? Rogue's Marker. Create a portal to the Rogue Harbor from a town or hideout. Use this currency for services in the Rogue Harbor, okay? And all right, so here are the contracts. So it looks like basically like maps. So you, you have them white and then you can uh, use like orbit transmutation or Alex on it to make it. Uh, medical rare, making it tougher, of course. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. So increased raising of alert level from opening chests. I don't know what this means. That if if we get discovered, do we just get more mobs to kill? I mean, if that's the case, then you know that's that should be fine. Because um, 
Yeah, I mean, we just need to kill them. I don't know. They might be super, super, yeah, like a lot of trouble or, you know, we're just going to fail. I don't know. But, all right. The urn of Farud. The, the Faridun cannot earn burial in the sky. They have other ways of keeping the dead. We have an, an incense of Keth. Sap of the Aturi tree, known only to grow at the meeting point of the seven waters. Nothing since its disappearance has smelled as wondrous. I don't know what this is, if this is something you need in order to start the heist, or, uh, you know, what it is, but I guess we'll figure it out. Alright, that's pretty cool. Alright, execute the heist. Uh, if you can't escape the heist, you lose everything you stole while infiltrating the facility. Makes sense. You need to support your rogue while they by bypass security in order to re reach the vault. Be careful with how much commotion you cause, or you may trigger the alarm causing the facility to be locked down. When this happens, it's time to run. I would really like to know what that looks like and what that means. Um, okay, we have the Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid uh, alert kind of thing. That's nice. All right, and here is the, uh, I guess, the grand treasure. All right, okay. All right, so for our crew and the equipment, um, specialized items can be equipped to rogues to make them stealthier, deadlier, and more adept at their roles. Like any other Path of Exile items, rogue equipment can be crafted with currency items. A well-equipped crew is a great asset when undertaking the most difficult heists. Okay, and I, I've only seen, you know, the rogue. I guess we have like other other classes as well. All right, so incre increased job experience gain. Increased damage. Right, and then we have mods that also uh, buffs you as a player. That's nice. All right. Okay, cool. And okay, so we have four of them we can add. And I, I suppose this is skills. We have like lock picking, traps, and whatever that is. I can't really see. It looks like a palm tree, but. <laughs> All right. So for the end game, then, <clears throat> the grand heist. So the ultimate goal of a thief is to pull off a grand, grand heist. This requires access to blueprints that shows where the vaults are located inside sprawling facilities. These elaborate jobs require masterful planning, purchasing additional intel about the facility, and hiring multiple rogues to assist with their many obstacles. Alright, so do we only have rogues or... Uh, I don't know. Alright, so this planning can result in a huge payoff, as each vault has its own exclusive rewards. Alright, and here we have some examples of blueprints. And yeah, as you see, it's level 43, 64, and 84. And there you have it. We're gonna need perception, demolition, engineering on that one, for example. And on this one, it also has counter uh, thaumaturgy and agility. Brute force. I mean, this is cool. So basically, you need to have your your rogues or your team um, at a sufficient level when it comes to these skills. I really like it. Looks really cool. All right, so thieves trinkets. One of the exclusive rewards you'll be able to see from Grand Heights are trinkets. Oh which go into their own new equipment slot hey all right cool we're gonna get a new equipment slot for the trinkets all right so these magical items influence what rewards you'll find from future highs you run some of their modifiers affect the items dropped by enemies and chests will auto modify the rewards you could obtain from a high special reward chests. all right so this only affects the highest i presume Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so this is only for the heist then. So, increased chance for items to drop corrupted, increased rarity, double divination card from heist chest, alright. This one's pretty cool. 5% chance for regal orbs to drop as exalted orbs instead in heists. Okay. Increased rogue market drop, rogues market dropped, double maps, double scarabs. Alright, that's pretty cool. And we'll see if we only have room for one trinket, or if we maybe have two. And then we have alternate quality gems. So alternate quality gems come from Grand Heights reward rooms, and provide even more depth for existing skill and support gems. 
Okay. Each existing Path of Exile gem has up to three alternate quality versions with grant different quality bonuses than the original gems. Some simply increase the power of the gem, while others entirely change, which builds most benefit from the gem. Oh, okay, that's cool. All right, so we have uh, we have the Archmage first. We have the Sweep, no, the Cleave, sorry, and Herald of Agonies as an example. All right, so the Archmage. Uh, let's see if I can notice any difference here. So support skills that deal damage with hits and harmonic cost. Cannot support trigger skills or skills used by traps, totems, or mines. All right, that's the same. And um, all right, so this, as I can see, the difference here is that supported skills gain added cold damage equal to 39% of mana cost. It basically adds uh, cold damage uh, on top of the added lightning damage. All right, that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, Archmage um, got nerfed, or the way you could use it with increasing the mana cost of your items. It is still, it's still all right, and this might actually put it back into the spotlight again. Okay, so looking at Cleo, I suspect this is the same here. So, yeah, what I can see, it, it adds life gain for each enemy hit, and maybe the radius? Can't remember if that was on there from the start. All right, and then we have Herald of Agony, where the difference is that is a chance to inflict Wither. Okay. Right, that's interesting. And uh, I mean, if this, if there's an alternate gem for every gem there is, then I suppose we're gonna have plenty of new build ideas, build guides, etc. And uh, yeah, that looks super cool. Right, moving up. Replica uniques. Right, as you saw this, I mean, it looked like it's the same thing, but it looks different. So, I mean, I bet we're gonna get some more info on what this is and why we why we need it. So, other rewards you can claim from Ground Heights are replica unique items and experimented base types. Yeah, we saw that on the video as well. Replica unique items result from attempts to recreate unique items of legend, where the end product has a few crucial differences. Okay. They're often appropriate for entirely different character builds than the original items. And experimented base types are a variety of new item space types that have exotic properties that differ from their core game counterparts. It feels like the, like the core of this, of this league is to take existing items and existing gems and basically change them so that we can, we can do more. We can uh, try new builds. Um, like if you have an item that is usually good for let's say cold damage and now you can suddenly play it in a lightning damage build or uh, let's say um, um, like chaos or poison item is now good for minions etc and uh, that that sounds awesome let's uh let's look at some of the examples here and they are actually glowing they have like a, a red like fiery lava ish glow to them okay so okay Eldritch Battery during Flash Effect. Life recovery from Flash also applied to Energy Shield. So that is a... Replica Sorrow of the Divine. Let's, uh, let's see. So... Oh, okay, okay. So the difference here... Is that you get Eldritch Battery during Flash Effect. Okay. I don't see why you would need it, you know, just running Eldritch Battery on Flask Effect and not just pick it on the tree. But I guess there are builds where it's too far to reach, like if you're playing Marauder or um, maybe if you're playing Duelist and it's too far away. Okay, we got the Linus Pause. With, all right. And if I'm not mistaken, it adds Toxic Rain when attack with the bow. And Abyssus. Oh, okay. So this adds elemental damage to attacks instead of just adding physical damage to attacks. Wow. And yeah, increased elemental damage taken instead of uh, physical damage taken. This is really, really cool. So basically we can take the abysses which usually are used with, with physical melee uh, builds and then if you want to play elemental you need to convert that um, fist to elemental. But here if you're if you're playing, let's say, a ranger, where you're focusing on elemental damage, and you maybe don't scale as much 
from increased physical damage, then you can use this one still because now it adds physical uh, elemental damage to attacks. Wow, that is uh, that is cool. That is really cool. And then here is a uh, experimented base type. So yeah, this one has added fire damage to attacks as an implicit, uh, really high one as well. That is also super nice. I think we're gonna see a lot of new builds here. Another way, you know, a whole new way of of, of building our, our our characters here it's really cool all right enchantments so the final type of new reward available from ground heights is a selection of weapon and body armor enchantments and these enchantments come from unnaturally unnaturally powerful rare items and affect the magnitude of modifiers on those items some of these are enchantments are so powerful that they involve substantial drawbacks what okay all right, so I, I don't see a drawback in this one, but okay. 200%, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So 200% increased attribute requirements is a drawback, and the, like, the good thing is the fist modifiers have increased effect. All right, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to see some more examples coming up, but it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting concept. All right, so, okay, this is pretty cool. So oppressive curses. So... We've added a new curse related skill and a new curse support gem. The new doom mechanic causes self cost curse to increase in intensity over time until it expires. This works well in conjunction with the impending doom support, which causes an explosion of chaos damage when a linked curse ends. Curses also have also received a new look. Alright, so all curses? Okay, so many curses are classified as hexes and now use the doom mechanic. self cost hexes build up doom the longer they're active, increases their effect. Alright, so you cast the curse on yourself, and you build up your doom, and then you unleash it, unload it. Um, okay. Alright, so impending doom support, it is the new support for this doom type. Um, the doom mechanic. And I suppose that when the doom is up, or when the curse is up, or whatever, you get the doom loss. So impending doom triggers doom loss. Oh, okay, so you need the support to trigger doom, okay. When supported hex on an enemy expires, causing an explosion of chaos damage based on the level of doom that had accumulated while the hex was active. Okay, so you curse the enemy with the hex. And when it expires, you will get a Chaos Damage Doom Explosion. Okay, sounds like kind of a, like, a, like a new cool Profane Bloom um, kind of effect. Right? Okay, and then we got Punishment, which has been reworked so that it now causes enemies to take increased damage while they are on low life and explode with overkill damage when they die. All right, so uh, punishment is it's pretty common when you're playing um, like uh, last right gladiator, for example. So you're using a shield and you have punishment where you attack back to them, and it is now changed. So when they are low life, they will explode with overkill damage when they die. So that's that sounds pretty cool. So that opens up for more more classes to actually get this, uh, you know, on death explosion. So basically. Get a shield, you get the punishment, and you uh, you buff your overkill, like with uh, you know on the tree, for example, and then you get cooler explosions. That's how I see it. But yeah, that's uh, that sounds super cool. Right? What else? Sharpened steel skills. Uh, we revamped revamped steel skills by introducing shards. No more shards. Uh, we don't need to click. Okay. So. These shards are deadly blade fragments that hover near your character. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. The Call of Steel skin is available whenever you have a steel skill equipped. It bursts into shards, shards from the ground, providing more ammunition for steel projectiles and cause, causes existing shards to explode out of impaled enemies. We also added one new steel skill and reworked both shattering and lancing steel. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Lancy Steel is changed, so it consumes steel shards by thrusting an axe or sword, sword forward and creating a group of impaling projectiles in the air, which shoot projectiles forward after another. Okay. 
I mean, uh, I mean, it sounds cool. You shoot, you shoot a bunch of like steel shards on your enemy. I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, it is well needed. I mean, no one is playing with with blonde and steel. Let, let, like, let's let's be honest here. And okay, so splitting steel. So consume a steel shard to fire a single impaling projectile that splits on impact and creates an explosion of damage. The split projectile flies at nearby enemies and creates smaller explosions on impact. All right. Okay. So, okay, so that is a, that is a new one. So they changed shattering and losing steel, and then they added splitting steel, which basically sends an ex a projectile that will explode. I wonder how, how this would look like with like having G, uh, like GMP and just exploding everything. Last one should be... Wait, is this not Lancing Steel? Call of Steel causes all impaled enemies in a large radius to release all their spikes at once, dealing air damage as the shards burst out of them. These spikes be become steel shards, which can be used as various sources of ammunition for other steel skills. If there aren't enough impaled enemies within range, this skill generates steel shards over a short time. Alright, so it sounds like you're supposed to impale the enemies first, then you use Call of Steel in order to create the steel shards. Then you use, for example, Splitting Steel or Lancing Steel to use those steel shards to make damage. Which is uh, it's a really cool concept. Uh, it sounds really cool. All right, let's. Uh, so that was for the melee. Uh, sounds super cool. I, I really like it. Uh, the steel skills sounds interesting. Uh, the curses. I mean, we'll see. Um, gonna have to try it out, but um, yeah, we'll see. And the spells. Uh, I feel like, like there is a lot to be to be done there. Uh, to have a little bit more diversity, we have some spells that are far better than any other spell. And uh, yeah, basically, if you're not using the like top 10 meta spells, you're gonna have a hard time. And uh, yeah, so they're added, they added six new spells Discharge and Glacial Cascade is reworked. Oh, Glacial Cascade has always been my favorite, my favorite spell. It, it, it looks so cool, it like it feels good, and you take your physical damage, you convert it into cold, and just you, you know you're just a badass and uh it was more popular like back in the day and playing like with totems or with mines but i haven't seen it in quite some time so it's gonna be interesting to see what they've done to it uh but anyway a goal with these new spells is that while they are powerful in a variety of character builds they have additional benefits when self cost all right okay i like it I like it. So, Ball Lightning, Glacier Cascade. Uh, most often they are used with Totem or Mine or something. And now you're going to get additional benefits if you cause it yourself. Same with Arc, where uh, we've seen a lot of people use it with Mines, for example. Or Totems. Alright, that's really cool. So let's see here. Blazing Salvo. Uh, this spell releases a volley of Fiery Mortars. Targeting enemies up close causes the mortars to land with overlapping impacts, while firing from further away causes the mortars to cover a larger area. Okay. Close single target, further away, clear. Alright, cool. Blazing Salvo. More fire spells. Uh, I mean, we, we need more, we want more. And, oh, wait, what is this? A chaos spell. Void Spear. Creates a Void Spear that pulses with physical and chaos damage, pulling in all non-unique enemies. Wait, doesn't this sound like this, the, um, the mage, the witch spell thing in Diablo? Like the, the orb? I, 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 or the spear? I can remember what it's called. Alright, so the spear, <laughs> anyway, slows enemies with increasing intensity the closer they are to it and sucks their corpses into the void. Right, so I can imagine like rushing into a pack, pull out the voice bear, it groups them up, slows them so you're, you know, you can just use whatever spell you want just to finish them off. Sounds like a really cool addition to uh, 
like as a strength contagion build for example if you have that on spell slinger uh maybe add this one as well i don't know but yeah i like it the last one showcased here is flame wall and i don't know we have the ice wall or frost wall or whatever it's called um which was underwhelming but okay it creates a wall of fire which deals burning damage to everything in its area when you or your allies fire projectiles through the wall, they'll deal added fire damage and apply some of the wall's burning effect to enemies. Ah, okay, that's okay, that's cool. That's cool. So basically, if let's say you have a boss here on the other side and you fire your fireball or magma or whatever it is, a molten strike, through this wall, you're gonna get added added damage basically. And I guess increased ignite effect. It only says the wall's burning effect, but right. Alright, and apparently much, much more. So, Path of Exile Heist also introduces over 25 new uniques, 12 new divination cards, a visual revamp to some skill effects, and much more. Alright, so this is an example of a new item. So, it triggers Corpse Walk when equipped, increased movement speed, evasion energy shield, increased damage if you consume the corpse recently, and for each nearby corpse, you get increased life region. Okay. Chains of Emancipation. Life, Chaos Rest. Enemy hits inflict temporal chains on you. And when you lose it, you gain maximum rage. And immune to curses while at least 25 rage. Interesting. And there is one divination card called the Triskaidekaphobia, which gives you a 100% Delirium tier 13 map with 8 modifiers. That is. Corrupted. All right, cool. All right, yeah, we're getting Path of Exile to Mac OS. We get the supporter packs, and yeah, um, that was about it. And uh, but I don't know, it looks good. I don't want to jinx it, but I'm excited. Um, yeah, and that's gonna be be all for this video. Um, I hope you all you all are are all excited as well. If there is anything special here that you really enjoyed and you're really looking forward to, please let me know in the comments. And yeah, with that said, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. If you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. And yeah, take care and see you the 18th of September.